next guest is an anchor on NBC's Today Show and a host of Dateline NBC. He has just written a new book, Pops, Learning to Be a Son and a Father. Please welcome to The Late Show, Craig Melvin. <laughs> I know, isn't it nice? We were just talking about this backstage. Yeah. Is that I have been watching you for years. I've quoted you on the show when I interviewed Bill Clinton based upon your interview I, I with that. him about Me Too. And I was talking about it back then. I, I think I know that guy. I think I met that guy on a plane flight from Columbia, South Carolina back in, you know, 2000 and Meow Meow. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> and you told me just now that that's true. How did we meet? Here's the thing, Stephen Colbert. I, I would not be in this seat, arguably, had it not been for a chance encounter with Stephen Colbert. You, you won't remember this. I'll never forget it. 2008, um, Stephen Colbert, some of you are too young to remember this, he ran for president. I did. Um, <laughs> I did. He's, yeah. He's, not a good idea. He's, he's running for president um, back when, when the idea of, of someone being on television and having a big personality when, when that seemed to, you know, maybe not be... When that was funny. Right, right. <laughs> and I, I was running in South Carolina, my You're, home state, where you, you were. You were in the South Carolina program, and he'd just written a book as well. He, the book was uh, modestly titled, I Am America. <laughs> and, and, and so I'm on this plane at Columbia Metropolitan Airport, and I'm on my way to a job interview in New York City. I was doing the local news mm -hmm. at WIS-TV in Columbia. Columbia's news leader. Colum yes, look at you. <laughs> Fellow South Carolinian, he knows. So I'm, I'm on the plane. I could not be more nervous about my job interview in the big city. Oh. And I'm sitting in a window seat, and, and they're about to close the door because the, you know, it's like 10 minutes before takeoff. And this guy gets on with like three or four other people, flurry of activity, and he sits in the chair right next to me. I look over and I'm like, oh my God, it's the guy from Jon Stewart's show. <laughs> And, and I'm like, well, I don't want to be that guy. Because, you know, no one wants to be that guy. And you said something to me. You could not have been kinder. You're like, hey, where are you going? And at that point, I just needed someone to talk to. And I. Because you're all hopped up. Oh, my God. This. I remember you were going to interview at NBC. At That's NBC what I News. So I proceed to talk about the job and how nervous I am. And this guy, total stranger proceeds to talk about his best-selling book that's on the New York Times list. <laughs> but after that, you proceeded to tell me your story. And you talked about, and I'll never forget it as long as I live, you talked about how tragedy early in your life um, shaped who you would become and how you found comedy. And you talked about how when you got the call to go to The Daily Show, how up until that point you were writing for some sitcoms, and you weren't killing it. Um, and, and, and when the phone call came, you were relieved. You'd done Second City, you'd done all this stuff, but up until that point, you told me about renting furniture with your wife in some apartment and how you had struggled mightily all these years. And, and then you became Stephen Colbert. And I remember in that moment thinking, if this guy can do it, <laughs> If this guy can make it, and you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Seriously, you're welcome. It was it was it was the pep talk that the kid from Columbia, South Carolina, desperately needed. Well, speaking of you know being shaped by the own events of your life, yeah. you've written a new book uh, called Pops: yeah. Learning to Be a Son and a Father. What made you want to write a book about your dad? So, you know, not to give away too much, but um, the first line in the book is, you know, my, my, my dad was born in a, a federal prison in West Virginia in 1950, and it's not something that I really knew about, not something that we really talked about until I sat down to write this book. And, and, and the ways that that uh, shapes and molds someone, um, as you might imagine, you don't fully appreciate until later in life. So, um, my dad struggled mightily most of my life, up until, in fact, three years ago, with various addictions, uh, gambling, uh, booze. 
and he was not the kind of father that um, I wanted and needed in the, in the 80s and 90s growing up in, in Was South he present for you? Was he there? He was physically present, um, but, but not, you know, not emotionally present, not spiritually present. And he also worked third shift at the post office. He was a mail clerk for almost 40 years. Um, so, you know, during the day he was sleeping, the night he was working, and if, if, if he wasn't working, he was drinking or, or, or passed out. Or, so it, it, um, it, it, it affected me. And I, I didn't fully appreciate it. I didn't fully appreciate the ways it affected me until I got old and I started, you know, seeing a therapist and talking about it. And, um, and so three years ago, my dad got in a, a little fender bender because he'd been drinking and we staged an intervention. And we'd done it before. We'd staged interventions before and they had it stuck. And this time it stuck. We used a professional and he was 67 years old, Stephen. He had been drinking um, for more than 40 years. Um, he kicked the gambling addiction. He did that for about 15, 20, 20 years. But he, he, had, he was drinking to the point where he was going to hurt himself or hurt someone else. And then at 67 years old, um, the village that, that, that loved him, loves him, um, we sat him down and we hired a professional. We brought her in and we read our letters of love. And uh, he checked himself into a, a rehab facility, inpatient. And 12 weeks, 12 weeks later, he comes out. And, and he's the guy on, 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 the, on the cover there. He's, that well, picture is from my, my six-year-old, my seven-year-old son's uh, birthday party. He is making up for lost time in a big way. We have to take a quick break, uh, but please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Craig Melvin.